Interestingly enough, the darkness in Good Friday does find an overtone in secular literature. It's hard to believe that it does, but it does. Uh, we have, for example, the record of a Greek historian of natural wonders. His name was Phlegon, P-H-L-E-G-O-N. He's very much like an ancient version of Believe It or Not by Ripley. He's kind of a Ripley person talking about unusual occurrences that took place. And he says that in the fourth month of the fourth year of the 202nd Olympiad, that's the way they counted the years in those days, there was a darkness so intense that you could see stars in the daytime, and there was an earthquake in Nicaea, which is the place where later on, of course, the Great Council of Nicaea took place in 325. Well, interestingly enough, uh, my, the date for Good Friday that I had established through my own research was the 3rd of April, 33 AD. And then later on when I saw this evidence, I tried to figure out what the fourth month of the fourth year of the 202nd Olympiad might be. Turns out to be April of 33 AD. Now that's not how I came to that date, but it is interesting then that we have this reference outside to the darkness which evidently was far more than simply Jerusalem and vicinity. Uh, although there have been various other explanations. It was a Khamsin, that's kind of a desert storm that uh, darkened the, the sky. Others have suggested it was some kind of eclipse, but that doesn't work. Uh, the moon was in the wrong position at the time, and so on. So it's interesting how scripture is, even in this specific item, borne out by secular evidence from what happened on Good Friday.